at what I've got for you. You'll love this. What now? Before we can start building as much as an outhouse, we'll have to get the whole area cleared, and we'll need lots of people to work the land and parcel it out. Right. So I suppose I'd better get to Ratai first and see to that announcement. Indeed. I'm sure the bailiff will be more than happy. It will get the refugees out of his hair, and the citizens will stop complaining. I'll stay here for now and start planning the building plots. As soon as the laborers arrive, I'll start allocating work to them. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Good afternoon. I'd like to uh, order something here. Uh-huh. And what do you want? Uh, 
Ah, uh, I'll certainly need a physician to treat my wounds. Then a hot bath and uh, launder in my clothes. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. Yeah. What? Look out.
May the Lord watch. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
か What do you need? Hey, Henry. Are you happy here? It's not worth a damn. If I had any choice, you wouldn't see my heels for dust. Well, what's happened? Did you two get yourselves into trouble? What well, fine friend you are, assuming it's our own bloody fault. Oh, come on. You know what you two are like. I had to ask. Well, perhaps with that monk. But now, the foreman's got it in for us. If he could, he'd skin us alive. Always forcing you to work, is he? If only. That wouldn't be so awful. But nothing we do is good enough for him. There's always some reason for him to yell at us. I can imagine. You know what it's like. We do too little, and it takes us too long, and what we eat's worth more than the work we've done, and it's no fun listening to that sort of shit day after day. And you definitely don't... You don't ever provoke him? I've already told you once, he's an arsehole. I'd say there's nothing we can do about it. If he wants to yell at us, he'll yell at us. Have you tried talking with him? What do you think? But that just sets him off. He starts saying we're practically bandits, and what he's going to do about it. That gets Fritz going, and he starts yelling too, and... And the miller won't stick up for you. I would have thought all the yelling would drive him mad. Not really. He trusts that loudmouth bastard more than us. He's got us down for a pair of parasites. I see. What's so stupid is the mill really needs us. They haven't had any hands here for quite a while, and the mill needs a lot of fixing. But with them around, we can't even get to work. Hmm. I'd never have guessed he's like that. Well, get a job here as a hand and you'll soon see. And what does he do during the day? Does he work with you? <laughs> Good one. He keeps his eye on everything, but his hand only touches the saw when the miller shows up, which isn't that surprising. Why? Henry, the last time he did anything, he almost took his thumb off with a chisel. I wouldn't put an axe in those paws of his either. So he's clumsy and arrogant. That's what you said about your last master, that Nimoy. Aye, but at least you could sneak away from old Nimoy for a bit. No chance of that around here. 
And what do you want to do about it? Just run away? Actually, I'd like to stay here. At least for a bit. I never would have thought I'd like working in a mill. But not with him around. It's unbearable. And there's no one I can complain to. But you could. Me? Do you think they'll listen to me? They did once already, didn't they? They hired us because of you. You could have another word with them. But back then, making promises was enough. Now, it will be worse. You can forget about the miller. It's Thomas you need to convince. The miller takes his opinion seriously. So, will you do it for us? Again? Fine. I'll try and talk to him. <sighs> I'm glad. But try not to get on his wrong side. You won't get anywhere with him then. I'll keep that in mind. See you later. <laughs> Hey, twat face! Matthew told me your foreman's a fool, and you're not exactly filled with Christian love for him. You better believe it. I'd like to pay him back for everything, and drown him in the river. Drown him? What's he done to you? It was the, uh, first or the second day here. But we had a disagreement, and I told him off. And then, all of a sudden, we're fighting, and that fucker just throws me in the river. I nearly drowned. Well, how did you get out? I thought you couldn't swim. I can't. They pulled me out. I was up to my waist in water. I see. Well, I'd be pretty fucking angry, too. So you want to pay him back? Exactly. I don't give a shit about anything around here. But that bastard's in need of a good trouncing. I spoke with him briefly and he doesn't seem so horrible. Then you ought to try working with him. He's a sneaky bastard. And arrogant. You should see how he puffs himself up when he's off to play dice with Lawrence. Who's Lawrence? Another mill hand? Aye, but the neighbouring mill. They call him the Wren. Damned if I know why. Thomas goes there to play dice with him. What about the others at the mill? Are they awful as well? The miller's an old fool. He believes every word that comes out of Thomas's mouth. It's hopeless. And then there's the miller's daughter. She's a pretty lass. And kind with it. But what can she do? Nothing. Not that it stops Matthew going to see her. But Thomas is the root of the problem. Do you think he's jealous? Is she a sweetheart? He might make puppy dog eyes at her. But most of the time he just struts about like a peacock. I really don't think she's the problem. And what do you want to do about it? Do you think you can come to an agreement? No fucking chance. Matthew hopes so because he likes it here. It's true the work's better than the mines. But the play's worse. So how do you plan on dealing with it? Leaving? Perhaps. But first, I want to give Thomas a proper trouncing. I mean a real thrashing. And you think that will help? Maybe. Maybe it'll knock some sense into that fat head of his. Or he'll be too frightened to mess with me. That... might help. So why don't you arrange a fight with him? If we win, he'll leave us alone. Oh, we could... What? We could lure him off someplace far away and then wait for him. Maybe to play dice with Lawrence. He would have to go through the dark woods. Mm. I'll think about it. The monastery wants you to pay for treatment. That doesn't sound right. Leave it be, Howl. I won't. What happened? We... might have pummeled his face. Uh, but don't get involved in me. We'll settle it on our own. Wait, who exactly did you pummel? Well, he kept on bothering us and... Uh, in a nutshell, it was his fault and we're not going to talk about it anymore. But couldn't there be a way to settle it? Maybe he'd let you off the... There isn't. Don't be a twat, Fritz. The two of you are up to your necks in shit, and you're gonna play tough instead of seeing sense. 
Go to hell, Henry. You and Elias. You want as bad as the other. No, if you say so, I'll leave it be. Goodbye. <laughs> Henry. See you later. Taking so long. God save you. So what do you think about the workers I brought you? If I hadn't put in a good word for them, the miller would have thrown them out by now. I heard them say something else. So they're complaining, are they? <laughs> I provide for them, and all they do is slack off. Isn't it the miller who provides for them? He can't manage the work anymore. If it weren't for me, there'd be nothing left standing around here. But you need the help anyway, and they're pretty handy. Maybe, but they're in no danger of overworking themselves. They act like they're too good for the mill. And I saw them eyeing up Jane. Nothing strange about that. She's a pretty girl, and she's of an age to marry. It's not marriage they've got on their minds. They'd have their way with her, then before her belly started to grow, they'd have run for the hills. Look, we can reach an agreement. You need the mill fixed, they need the money. If they have peace to do their work, they'll be able to finish it faster. But... And then they'll take their groschen and leave. The mines will open again, and the faster they get their money, the quicker they'll be gone. But do you really think I can trust them to do it? Will they do their work and leave? And leave Jane alone in the meantime? Of course. They're not interested in the mill. They just need the coin to pay their debts. Once they've got enough, they'll have no reason to stay here. I never thought we could sort it out this way. I've known them for a long time, and you can rely on them when it comes to this. Everybody will be better off. All right. If they keep their part of the bargain, I'll even give them a few extra groschen. But woe be tied them if they don't. You can tell them that. May the Lord watch over you. God save you. Are you happy with your new workers? They're good carpenters but someone constantly has to stand behind their backs and keep an eye on them. Really? Yes, yes. When I'm there with them, everything goes smoothly. But the moment I leave, I hear Thomas yelling at them. I've heard. I don't know what I'd do without Thomas. He keeps an eye on everything for me now. The mill wouldn't function without him. Oh, but Thomas has problems with carpentry. You're right. You should hear him cursing when he has to turn his hand to it. He knows he'll never be a real miller. What, just because of that? No. He's not too skilled at handing the water wheel and the mill run either. He can wield a shovel well enough, but otherwise I have to keep telling him how to do things. So he's not been foreman too long then? No. My son used to run the mill. But then his wagon overturned with him inside it. It'll be a year ago now, come spring. I'm sorry. Me too, boy. And after Martin was gone, the other workers left and only Thomas stayed. I don't know what I'd do without him. What happened that day? Wagons don't overturn themselves. He was transporting new stone blocks for the mill and he had to take a detour. Since the wagon was too heavy for the Ford, it was after a downpour. The load must have slipped and the whole wagon fell on him. 
I pray it was quick. So he was alone, with no one to help him? Of course not. Thomas was there too. He helped Martin to load the wagon in Sassar, and both of them set off back. Just the two of them? No one else was there? No, they always did it that way. Martin didn't like dragging people where it wasn't necessary, when they could be doing work elsewhere. But if I had been there with them, maybe he'd still be alive. Thomas couldn't pull the wagon off him. He ran for help, but it was already too late. I'm sorry, but I'm sure he's in God's kingdom now. He was a good boy, a kind soul. Have you been without carpenters for a while? A long time. Since winter, it's been just me and Thomas. Nobody stays around? No. These days, it's hard to find a man you can rely on. Young lads today are bone idle. None of them wants to do an honest day's work. And how many have actually worked here? About half a dozen, maybe more. We always put up with them till the most urgent work was done, then sent them packing. And what about Jane? Shouldn't she have a husband by now? What are you trying to say? A pretty girl like her is ripe for marriage. With a large dowry because she comes from a mill? Well, she had herself a man once, but he ran away during the winter. He wasn't up to the work either. And how long did he last? You know, he was here for a while. But back then my son was a foreman and he was a kindly son. Too kind. He never threw anyone out. So everyone started leaving when Thomas took over? Well, Thomas is a dog on slackers. And just as well. Maybe it's harsh, but that's what you need nowadays. If we don't mill, folk don't eat. So the moment Thomas became mill foreman, everyone started running off. Not one man could stand it here, even if they had a chance to marry Jane. Don't you think Thomas might be doing it on purpose? Sounds to me like he's after the mill. Or your daughter. Or both. That's not like him. He's a good man and straightforward. He knows I can always send for a new mill form. And Jane? Don't worry about her. She'll wed whoever I approve of. Even Thomas, if he asks for her hand. At least with him, I know he won't leave the mill. Indeed, why would he, once he's got rid of everyone else? That's enough. I don't know why you're trying to slander, Thomas, but I don't mean to listen to it any longer. May the Lord watch. I heard what you asked my father. You can't expect help from him. He's none too sharp these days. And can you help me? No. Nobody listens to me. But I wanted to say that Thomas does do it on purpose. He did it the same way before. Why? Because he's afraid if someone comes who's more skilled, father will notice and give his job to the newcomer. And your father lets him? Can't he settle this? He probably could, but he doesn't want to. My brother was the mill foreman before him, but last year a wagon overturned on him, broke his back. It broke my father too. And Thomas was here the longest. He was always close to my brother, so father chose him as the mill foreman. And Thomas doesn't listen to anyone. Can't you persuade him? No. He keeps looking my way and tries to be nice, but he doesn't care what I've got to say. When I tell him something, it goes in one ear and out the other. And this probably won't end well. And what happened to your brother? And what does that have to do with this? I don't know. You mentioned it, so I was just wondering. There's not much to tell. A stone block that was loaded wrong slippery ground after rain, and when the wagon overturned on him, there was no one around to help. What do you mean, no one? Surely he wasn't alone. No, he had Thomas with him. But Thomas couldn't lift the wagon off him, and by the time he found help, it was too late. And as if that wasn't bad enough, someone robbed my brother while Thomas was looking for help. Someone robbed him after he was dead? I don't know. But they took a mottled scarf which I gave him as a keepsake. He laughed when I gave it to him. He said it would make him look like a fop. But he still wore it all the time. And someone must have thought it was worth stealing. But who'd steal a scarf? Why are you asking me? When they brought him back here, he didn't have it. That's all I know. 
I'm sorry about what happened to him. Me too. But it was his own fault. If he'd brought more people with him, he'd still be alive. He was too... He was too kind for his own good. I understand. I heard you were with the miller's son when the wagon fell on him. And why all this? Well, I just heard some talk and I wanted to get the story straight from you. Talk? From who? I heard some gossip about it at the alehouse. What happened? Was it really lightning that scared the horses? What? No. There wasn't any storm. It was just the road was muddy and so we rode closer to the edge of it. It's a real stroke of bad luck, isn't it? Tell me about it. If I'd been behind the wagon, it would have fallen on me, too. Why did only two of you go? He always did it that way. But two people are enough for the trip, and if we needed an extra pair of hands, we could always find some local. Except at the end. If there had been more of you, he might have survived. Do you think I don't know that? I couldn't move the wagon on my own, so I went looking for help. We'd met a few travelers along the way, and I ran to find them, but it was too late. The weight of it crushed him while I was gone. I'm sorry. Me too. Me too. I didn't want to be the mill foreman, but the last thing he ever said to me, the very last thing he ever asked of me, was to take care of the mill. And I heard someone robbed him. Robbed? What kind of nonsense is that? I heard he was missing something when they brought him back. What? I don't remember anything. He had a scarf with him. Really? I don't know. Maybe he lost it on the way. Or it sank into the mud. Yes, that's probably it. It's still buried there somewhere. Well, I hope he's resting in peace. Amen. About those two? It's a wonder I still let them hang around. Good that you're here, then. Good luck to you. <sighs> Why is it taking so long? to fucking see you, Henry. See you later. Hey, Henry. I spoke with the miller's daughter. It's a shame her father won't listen to her. She knows all about Thomas, but... Her father doesn't believe her. He reckons it's just a woman's fancy. He probably thinks she's smitten with one of us. Not that I'd object, but she's a clever one. She'd make a better miller than either of those two. I'd like you to teach me how to be better. Certainly. Well. Copy with you.
lost something. I'm glad to see you. What's happening around? Ah, you know how it is. Especially at the mill. Not a week goes by without... Whenever they're planning some mischief, they're always huddled there in the corner, hatching their plots. Like yesterday, for instance. Oh, and another thing. Now I think of it. I've not seen Kunhuta here for some time. The local herb woman. She always comes here once a week for a tankard of ale. But she ain't turned. God be with you. God be with you. About those two. It's a wonder I still let them hang around. Except that you'll never make a decent miller. What? I heard when you've got an axe in your hand, you're more of a danger to yourself than any nearby wood. You leave that kind of work to men who know how to do it. That's a lie! Open that mouth of yours again and I'll shut it for you. Try me if you've got the guts. I'll punch your jaw off. Goodbye. Don't move a muscle! Surrender! Why? You you move. So it's you. You were seen starting a brawl. 
You should have thought twice about what you're doing. That will land you a fat fine. You're making a serious mistake. If only you knew what you've just got yourself into. This won't end well for you. Well, I, I thought... That is... I had no idea. If that's how it is, of course you may go. God be with you. Do you need anything? You're probably interested in what Thomas was hiding, aren't you? I certainly am interested. Especially in how you came to know. I saw it as it fell out of his pouch and... Uh... Show it to me. Isn't this your brother's scarf? That's it. Where did you get it? As I said, Thomas had it. He did? And what did he have to say about that? Nothing. I came straight to you. Oh. I suppose I'll have to decide what to do about it. But I'm grateful you've brought this. And maybe... Never mind. What is it? I was thinking you could go to him and tell him I have the scarf. But I think I'll handle it another way. As you wish. I'll go then. Take care. <laughs> Jesus, what have you been up to? Problem solved. He won't bother you again. Really? How'd you pull it off? I found out he has a soft spot. And I gave it a good poke. <laughs> I'd love to know what you found out about him. It doesn't matter. But it was enough for him to pack his things and disappear. Jesus, it must have been something terrible. So he's really gone? Yes. Now it's just you, so try not to misbehave. 
You know us. We never do that. Thank you kindly, Henry. We owe you again. Here. It's not much, but it's all we have. See you later. I'm glad to see you. Good luck then. I'd like to discuss the price. Well, we can try it. Satisfied? Come now, just a little more and we have a deal. Finally, a reasonable sum. Yeah.
Hold it right there. Yeah. Drop your weapon and handle your death. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah, this one takes long. Yeah.
What do you want here, lad? God save, Monsignor. My name's Henry, and I've been sent by Sir Hanish of Lipa. Sir Hanish, hmm. And why is he sending you? I'm to assist you in your search. Oh, I see. How considerate of him. Well, you've come at the right time. I need someone who'll go unnoticed among the locals. I'm sure Sir Hanish told you what I'm doing here. He said you're looking for heretics? Exactly. I'm seeking out the sores that inflict the body of the church. The rash of heretics. Valdensians. Dangerous heretics, one and all. How can I help you, then? Excellent. Let's get right to the point, Henry. I know how to get to where the heretics congregate. And what's stopping you from going there, sir? That is to say, I know in theory. The crux of the matter is this. We caught a heretic in Gutenberg who told us of the heretics in Uschitz. Regrettably, by the time he got around to describing their meeting place, he was already raving and hardly coherent. I see. So do you know where they meet up, or don't you? Possibly. His account was confused, to say the least. I have a record somewhere here. Can you read, boy? Naturally, Father. Otherwise, Sahanish wouldn't have sent me. I see. It's a good thing at least the servants of the nobility are getting a suitable education. Some of their own offspring can hardly write their own names. Here's the record of the interrogation. From what I can make out, his description of the route starts at the local tavern. Once you've found something out, come back and see me. I'll do my best, Father. Well... I'm not from Ujits exactly, so I don't know how well they'll accept me. That's good, because the last thing I need is one of these local good-for-nothings. I can't trust a single one of them. And they don't trust me either, but you're an ordinary lad with a likable face. If a bit simple-looking, you'll have a much better chance of learning their secrets. You flatter me, Monsignor. Very well, then. Are there any suspects? Everyone is a suspect. You can be sure of that. But I'll know more after I finish the interrogations. How did you conclude there are heretics here? We caught one in Gutenberg. He confessed to everything, including meeting up with others in Ushitz a few times. And that was all he told you? By the end, all his strength had left him, so he couldn't even put together a list. I see. I'm pleased to hear it. Who are these Valdensians? I've never heard of them. Really? Then you've either not been paying attention in church, or the parish priest in Ratai is too idle to read out the bishop's missive to the congregation. Um... Both possibilities are equally disturbing, but I'll allow you the benefit of the doubt and assume it's the latter. But to answer your question, it's a heretical sect. I gathered that much, but what form does the heresy take? Look, boy, I don't have time right now to embark on theological disputation. Besides which, it's not something you need concern yourself with. Suffice it to say, they are heretics. Very well, Monsignor. I'll get working on it, sir. God be with you, my son.
I have a few more questions about the investigation, Monsignor. Ask away, my son. I'll get working on it, sir. God be with you, my son. Good afternoon. Goodbye. Seděl na brdelko, začítal na okén, porostou tam láky. Mě nedá, že jsi ty chudobný, nejsi ke mně rovný, jdi ode dveří. Když nejsem roven, ostávaj s Bohem, pomož si můžeš být, moja nejmilejší, já si nemůžem. I'm getting desperate now. Why is that? You know what my old man is like, nothing ever good enough for him. Always turning his nose up at everything I cook. You'll think he had blue blood. What is it, this?
God be with you. Do you know anything about local brawlers? Why do you ask? I like a good punch-up myself, so I'm keen on meeting like-minded fellows. Then you're in luck, because I'm in charge of all the fights here. You want to join in right now, or have you any questions? What are the rules? Nothing complicated. Don't you worry. First thing, no weapons. Try that once, and you're finished. Second, you can't walk away. Jump the fence, and that's the end. You lose. How does it work? Easy. You come to the others and challenge them. Wager against each other, and if you win, you get your stake back, plus the same again from the fellow you beat. I like the sound of that. Don't get carried away, though. If you beat someone and then challenge him again, he won't be too keen on betting. Understand? I want to fight. Well, if you're as good as you are keen, it'll surely be interesting. But before the two of us start brawling, you have to beat the others. Who are they? Where can I find them? Lads from Ujits. Mash, Maple, and Ma. Uh, Joseph. Watch out.
Hmm. It seems I've found it. cross nicely carved hmm. someone in the village might recognize it Yeah. Ah, are you blind? For ah. Christ's sake, there's people walking here. Good day to you. What do you need? I'm looking for the owner of this cross. Do you happen to know whose it is? Uh, no, I don't. But why not ask the priest? He blesses all the crosses in the village. Thanks. I'll ask him. Farewell. Manger. day to you. The village folk said you consecrate the crosses they keep at home. Indeed I do. Why do you ask, Hal? I was just wondering if you could remember who owns this one. I could, but I might not want to tell you. Why? People said they saw you talking with a the vicar. They're afraid that Sir Hanu sent you here to help him. That's not how it is. And how is it? Sir Hannes sent me to find out what he wants, and to get him out of here if possible. Well, then we share the same interest. But I'd still prefer it to end with nobody burned at the stake. You and me both. That's good to hear. Where did you find the cross? Let's do a deal. I'll tell you where I found it, and you tell me whose it is. Very well. Tell me. I found it in the woods. It looked like people met there. There were other things, candles, a cloth, and so on. Damn it! That really does seem like... That the vicar is right to be looking here. It surprised me, too. So whose is it? The cross is definitely the Bowers, I remember that. But that just can't be. I can't believe it. 
If they really are heretics, though... What do you want to do? I don't know. But I'll do anything in my power to prevent a heretic witch hunt taking hold here. I see. It wouldn't make Sir Hanish too happy either. My thoughts exactly. But the question still remains what to do about it. The vicar won't give up till he's found what he wants. You know what, boy? Before we do anything else, we ought to make sure whether there really are heretics here. What do you propose? That's simple. Listen to how they say their prayers. What good will that do us? Prayers are sacred to all Christians, heretic or devotee. But if they are heretics, they are bound to pray differently. And how will I know there's something wrong with their prayers? Don't you know how true Christians pray? Um, I suppose so. But how can I listen to their private prayers? I don't suppose they'll be praying that way in the church. Certainly not. In the church they'd pray the usual way. But at home it's a different matter entirely. I know they meet at the farm in the evening with all the domestics. They'll surely be praying then. All right. But how can I listen in? I don't know. Crouch beneath the window? Climb up in the loft? That way you'll be sure to hear everything said in the main room. What do you know about the Bowers? When I think about it now, they're a little peculiar. What do you mean? Well, they do rather keep themselves to themselves. They attend Mass, true enough. They leave the moment it's over. And I've never seen them at a dance or a celebration of any kind. But on the other hand, they give more alms to the needy in the village than anyone. I can't deny them that. Where did those Bower folk come from? I don't really know. Uh, I've never spoken to them much, but they've not been here long, only two or three years. Hmm. And the cross? Did you consecrate that for the Bowers themselves? No. It belonged to the family who lived on the farm before them. That was quite a sad story. Right, I'll get on with it. God be with you. Yeah! Yeah.
Ah, I could try listening from here. which we are bound to receive from thy bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 They... They took old Wenzel to the presbytery today. His farm is nearby. It's only a matter of time before... Before they come for me. I know. And what are we going to do about it? That vicar is baying for blood, the beast. He will devour you alive. I do not intend to do anything about it. I shall not waver from my faith, nor turn my back on it. My dear, what on earth are you saying? If they come for me, I will go quietly. And I will not lie. Are you serious? Don't you know what they'll do to you? I can well imagine. But I am resolved. The Lord have mercy. Do not fear. I surrender to God's will. And I do not condemn you if you decide to leave. I'll stay by your side. Although I'd rather that you decided otherwise. I know. And you have no fear, my brothers in Christ. Stay true to God's plan as I shall. Go and spread the true faith amongst all good folk. I'm sorry, I wish there was another way. You should eat your supper and depart right away. Who knows? You may come for us at dawn.
Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. That's a good boy. That's my boy. Yeah. Yeah. God be with you. So, I went to check on the Bower Farm, and I don't have good news. Do tell. They most certainly are heretics. At least as far as I can tell. Are you sure? What did you hear? Well, for a start, the evening prayers were led by a woman. That is certainly unusual, but nothing conclusive in itself. But that's not all. They're afraid the vicar will be coming after them. Who wouldn't fear that? That swine finds fault with everyone. Well, it's not like you'd have to try too hard. Mrs. Bower plans to confess everything. Confess what, exactly? Most likely her faith. The people of the farm were trying to discourage that, but her mind's made up. Oh, good lord, that's all I need. What am I to do? I don't know, but we have to help them. You're quite right. You have to talk them out of it, Hal. You must convince them to run.
convince them. That's easy for you to say. You haven't heard her talking. I'm sure you'll find a way. You have to try at least. For their own good and for yours, Hal. I'll have to think about it. Talking to them could be dangerous. Nonsense. If you haven't told anyone else, then only the two of us know the truth. And what if they confess anyway in the end, and then say that I tried to warn them? Well, you have to try to stop that from happening. Good luck, then. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> 
May the Lord watch over you. Mistress Bower? What is it you need? I've come to ask something of you. Have you? And just who are you, young man? That doesn't matter. The important thing is that I want to help you and your husband. I admit that I'm a little confused. You've come to ask me something, but at the same time you want to help me. What's going on? I want to ask you not to confess to the vicar. Just take your husband and get out of here while there's still time. I have no idea why you're so taken with my fate, or how you found out about my intentions. But I'll tell you one thing. Changing my mind is out of the question. I won't betray my faith, nor my brothers in Christ. Now you've got a chance to escape. Surely you won't throw it away. I won't oppose God's will for me. For heaven's sake, woman. If it were God's will you should burn, it would have happened a long time ago. You can't know that. And don't you think the investigation is dragging on a bit? Do you think nobody in the village speaks badly of you? Don't fool yourself. Those old people from the farm who keep to themselves, they're ripe for denouncing, aren't they? And yet nobody's come to arrest you so far may just be that God is giving you time to get away. You may be right, but I can't lie. It's against all my teaching. You won't have to lie if you're never asked any questions. Just leave. You can preach elsewhere. I'm sure you have lots of friends who'd love to take you in. But I don't want to run. No one wants to run away, but sometimes we have no choice. If you run, your faith will live on. That must mean something. You're right. I shouldn't give in so easily. I've just grown so weary of the endless persecution. You should pack up and run away as soon as you can. The vicar might get here any minute. Thank you. Don't delay. Good luck then.
Yeah. Večera do rána. I'll have to get something to eat. I'm starting to get hungry. Good day to you. What do you need? Can we do something about the price? Well, we can try it. What do you say to this? You won't convince me with that. Aye, for that amount I can be persuaded. got for you. You'll love this.
My! Have a look at those melons! Wouldn't they make a fine treat? Bill? My respects to you. I found them, Monsignor. Pardon me? I found the heretics. Really? And who are they? The Bauer family and their entire household. Hmm. Well, I expect you to give me some evidence. In the last few days, I've been hearing how practically everyone here is a heretic. I found that place the captive heretic talked about, and I found a family cross there. It took a bit of asking around, but I learned it belongs to the Bowers. Their farm isn't far from here, to the north. And then all I had to do was go there and do a little spying. What of it? What did you hear? Nothing at all. The farm was deserted, not a living soul anywhere. Ha! They fled. So they are heretics. What will you do, Monsignor? It's not the first time the Devil's Spawn has fled from me. I'll do the same as always. Track them down and capture them. Don't worry, they won't get far. Thank you for your help. You may leave. May the Lord watch over you. <laughs>